Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. Fractured Vows Episode 8 Chapter 68 Lena I stirred but woke up with a start, not knowing where I was. I blinked a few times, as I didn't know what was happening to me. I looked around and couldn't help but frown. I was in a white room, nothing in there, only me and a bed I was lying on were here. I glanced down and realized that I wasn't in my blood-soaked clothes from before but in a white dress. You look better, came a heavenly voice. I looked around, but no one was there. Where am I? I tried to rack my brain, trying to remember where I was. Then a black wolf came to mind. It was staring at me with blood dripping out of the corners of its mouth. I looked like I was his next meal. I closed my eyes tight and shook my head. Someone clears their throat, which makes me open my eyes. I looked around, but as I stared toward the side, a gorgeous woman stood there with white eyes. You didn't answer me, she said as she stepped closer. I stared at her and felt weird. I didn't know this woman from anywhere, but I felt safe. How was that possible? You are trying to figure out where you are, she asked, which made me nod. I never took my eyes off her. The woman smiled. It's okay, she said. You're not dead, just resting. I wanted to meet you. I stared at her, feeling slightly confused. Who are you? I asked as I moved my head to the side, trying to figure out who she was. The woman showed her teeth in a grin. I'm Selene, she said, which made my eyes widen. I'm the moon goddess. My mouth went dry as I tried to process what she said, but Selene moved closer and held out her hand. We don't have much time, and I have someone who wants to see you. I looked at her hand and moved off the bed. As soon as I placed my hand in hers, the room changed. Like a puff of smoke, the room went from white to us standing in a garden. I couldn't believe this was happening. Beautiful isn't it, she said with a smile as she let go of my hand. I nodded, taking in the garden's beauty. As I look toward a set of trees, Something white comes hurtling toward me and pounces on me, which makes me fall to the ground as something starts licking my face. Lena, says Bex as she moves back. I move up onto my arm and look at the white ball of fluff that is my wolf. Bex, I whisper. I look up at Selene, who is giggling but gives a slight nod. I looked back at Bex, who licked my face again. Where are we? I asked, which was more for Selene than Bex. I got up off the ground and looked at Selene. Bex stood close to me, rubbing her fur against my legs. Selene smiles. You are in the rest world, she said. I brought you here as your body went through so much due to that she-wolf, and you needed to heal. Selene's face hardened at the mere mention of Naomi. I looked at her. I didn't mean to kill her, I said, slightly guilty, but Selene shook her head. I know you didn't, she said. I didn't know how strong of a hold her emotions were on your mate. I didn't say anything, but Selene looked at me. I give all wolves, my children, their soulmates for a reason, she said. Elias is yours. He was always meant to be with you but the way everything played out was mainly the fault of no one except those who were out to destroy both of you. I stared at her, but something soft brushed up against my leg, which made me look down to see Bex sitting next to me, with her head resting on my leg. I looked back at Selene. Why was she hell-bent on doing the things she did? I asked. Selene sighed. Naomi knew who her father was from when she was young her mother told her. She believed that she had alpha blood in her system and was a true alpha. 
I frowned, even though I knew that not to be true. Selene looked at me. Naomi wasn't meant to be born, she said, which widened my eyes. I mean, she would have been if her mum went to her mate like she was supposed to, but when an alpha like Alpha Trevor's father wants you, you had to go to him. She sighed and turned around, walking toward something, but she continued talking. Alpha Trevor believed everything his father believed, she said. He was a mad alpha in the making, and I should have dealt with him, but I wasn't allowed to interfere in my children's lives. He ruined everything I created, including his son. I watched as Selene stopped, looked over her shoulder, and gave me a small smile. I need to right all the wrongs he has done, she said. I need you and your mate to help me do it. I stared at her and moved my head at her. How are we supposed to do that? I asked. Selene smiled. I need you both to visit Alpha Trevor's pack because of the destruction he caused to them, she said. They never wanted any part of his beliefs. Alpha Eli and you will have to prove that not all Alpha and Luna are like them. I stared at her, trying to wrap my head around what she had said. You know you are meant to be together, she said. You were written in the stars for one another. You are perfect for one another, he brings out everything you hold and love. Also, he never said he didn't love you. My heart beat faster as she talked, but Eli and I were written in the stars sounded like a cliché type of thing. We were opposites. You know he never thinks before he speaks, I muttered, which she heard. Well you will put him in his place. You will ensure he knows what to do, and you are his equal. I stared at her. Selene stares, but her face softens slightly. If you don't believe me, she said and looked to the side of her. I think someone else will make you see sense. I looked at where she was staring, and a bright light appeared but went out as someone stepped out. I adjusted my eyes to the brightness, and my eyes went round as tears filled my eyes. My mum was in front of me, with a smile itching the corners of her mouth. Lena, she murmurs. My baby girl. Her voice sounded like the day I remembered our last conversation. I ran toward her and wrapped my arms around her. She pulls me into her as I let my tears fall. Mum, I whispered. After a few moments, I pulled back from my mum and looked back at her. Her finger removes tears from my eyes as her face lights up. Lena, she said. I am so proud of you. My heart melted at her words. I always wondered if she was. You are, I asked. My mum nodded. Not only did you and Bex protect me till your father came, she said but more about how you changed your perspective of what you went through regarding that she-wolf. I have been with you every step of the way in here, she said, pointing to my heart and placing her hand there. A lone tear escaped my eyes as I smiled at her. You have turned into one of the most powerful Luna I have ever seen, said Selene, who made me look at her. My eyes rounded as I stared at her. Selene smiled. You are someone everyone will follow, Lena, she said. I didn't say anything. This all felt so unreal. Lena, my mum called, which made me look at her. I don't have much time, she whispered, which made my heart break. I want you to get your dad to move on. I looked at her, shocked. She had to be joking. My mother was the love of his life he would never move on. My face must have said something, which made my mum's face soften. He will always love me, and I will always love him. I will wait until he returns to me, but he needs to move forward and live. There is a world outside those pack grounds with his name on. I knew where she was coming from, but I knew my dad, it would take a lot of convincing for him to leave. 
Maybe get Keith and Alpha Frank to go with him, she said, sounding slightly amused. I mean, the old men on tour sounds about right. I couldn't help the snort that left my mouth, which made Selene, Bex, and my mum laugh. My mum bent down and started to smooth Bex as Bex approached her. Bex nudged her hand as she tickled behind her ear, which earned a whine. My mother smiled and looked up at me. You have one beautiful wolf, she said. I smiled. She is, I said, looking at Bex. Also, my best friend too. Bex let out a bark and jumped up, placing her paws on my shoulders as she licked my face. I groaned which made Selene and my mum laugh again. Bex jumped down and wagged her tail but glanced over to Selene. She trots over to Selene, who bends down to stroke her. I sighed and looked back at my mum, who was staring back at me. My mother's face hardened slightly. Our moon goddess is right, she said. Eli has changed, but I know why you have been hesitating about letting him in but he needs you as much as you need him. She moved her head to the side as she stared at me. Also, I need you to talk with Logan, she said. He was suffering due to what happened to me. He needs to deal with it. I sighed, but she carried on. Logan suffered, as she looked over to the moon goddess, then back at me. He used the women as a distraction to cope, but it's slowly unraveling and he will need his baby sister. I nodded, but I looked at her. I am accepting Eli as my mate, I blurred out. After what happened with Naomi, all I could think about was him. My mum smiled, but her face softened and changed slightly as she stepped closer to me. She placed her hand in mine and used her other to caress my cheek. I couldn't help but close my eyes. I'm so proud of you. Sweetheart, she said as I opened my eyes, but a bright light started forming behind her. Mum, I said in a strangled voice. I love you. Tears ushered down my cheeks. I love you too, she said. The bright light shone, and my mum slowly vanished. I looked toward Selene, who smiled at me. You are ready to wake up now, she said. You are the true Luna of this pack. Let them all know who you are. The light shone again and was sent tumbling through and back into the darkness. I slowly could feel myself being pushed forward as I groaned. Mumbles could be heard around me. She's waking up, someone said. Tingles erupted through me as a hand squeezed mine. Lena, the voice calls out to me, which makes me want to open my eyes. Come back to me, the voice pleads. I slowly move and blink as my eyes open and look straight at another set of eyes. They were tired looking, but they were beautiful to look at. I knew who they belonged to, which made my heart beat fast, knowing he was with me. Eli Eli was staring back with concern, but relief, too, was written all over his face. I cleared my throat and spoke. Mate, was all that left my mouth. Eli stared back as a smile slid across his face. Chapter 69 Eli the hospital was busy, but I was glued to Lena's side. I never left. I was too afraid to sleep just in case she woke up. After a few hours, Tim left, and Keith joined me. We didn't do any talking, but I could feel his anxiety roll through him. I knew I had to be the Pax Alpha, but my main concern was Lena. My father was updating me on what was happening, and he told me many Pack members were concerned about their Luna. I looked back at Blaze, who had been silent most of the night. His eyes were open, but something told me he was thinking about Bex and Lena. I looked back at Lena, but my eyes scanned over to the wall where the clock was sitting. Lena has been sleeping for most of the night. The sun was coming up. I looked at Keith, who was sleeping with his head resting on the wall. 
I could feel my eyes start to get heavy, but movement on the bed made my eyes open wide. I looked at Lena, who was moving. She's waking up, I said a little too loudly, which startled Keith, who jumped out of his seat. I move and place my hand in hers, and tingles erupt through me. Blaze moved in my head, and was happy. Mate is waking up, he murmured. I kept my eyes glued to Lena, who was trying to open her eyes. After a few blinks, her eyes met mine. Lena, I said, everything I held back came tenfolds. I didn't know whether to cry or not. Lena cleared her throat, and all that came out was, mate. My heart shuddered in my chest hard. Mate. She called me mate. I couldn't help the big grin that formed. Lena tried to move but winced slightly as her hand went to her hip. Ah, she moaned out as she leaned back. I looked over at Keith, but he wasn't there. Where did he go? You okay? I asked as I stood up from the chair and moved closer. Lena's scent engulfed me, sending every fiber of my soul alight. I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself. Lino looked at me and gave me a small smile, her hand squeezed mine, letting me know she was okay. I'm okay, Eli, she whispered. The door burst open with the pack doctor, Keith, Tim and Logan, coming into the room. I stepped back, but as I was about to move my hand out of Lena's, she gripped my hand tight. I didn't move. The doctor checked on her and took every wire on her off. The room was silent, but the relief was written on everyone's faces. You had a few minor injuries that were already healing, he said with a smile, looking between us. Luna will have to be careful with her side, there will be scarring left where the alpha bit her, but I'm not too worried. I nodded but looked at Lena, who frowned. Great, a reminder of the prick she muttered. I stared at her, but I squeezed her hand to let her know it didn't matter. Lino looked back at me but turned to look at the doctor. When can I leave? she asked. I looked at him, but the doctor grinned. Well, hopefully, today, he said. I will need someone to fill out the paperwork, and we can send you on your way, Luna. That was music to my ears but there was a slight problem. Where was she going to stay? Never going to get used to people saying that, said Lena, who tried to say it quietly, but due to the werewolf hearing, everyone heard it. I looked at her but frowned. Lena shook her head and cleared her throat. Her eyes scanned the room as she sighed. Dad, can you fill in the forms? Tim nodded without saying anything. His face was soft as he did want Lena wanted. Tim followed the doctor out of the room. I was about to talk when the door burst open, and Alpha Dean and my father walked in. Lena, said my father, with a smile. Thank goddess, you're awake. Yeah, I agree with that one, said Alpha Dean with a smile as he looked at Lena. I noticed his eyes wander to our joined hands and he gave me a knowing look. Lena didn't say anything but smiled. I kept looking back at her. I don't know what, but something was off with her. My father turned his attention to me and cleared his throat. Some guards came back from the hunter's cabin, he said. There were traces of loads of footprints around, and there was a body, Naomi's. I stared at him in shock. Naomi was killed, but by who? Some snapped her neck, he said, but he was cut off by Lena, who had everyone stunned to silence with what came out of her mouth. I did it, she said. I killed her. I turned to look at her, and my eyes widened. Lena looked between us and started to tell us everything that had happened. Blaze came forward as he wanted to see her. He felt proud of her, and I was. After Lena explained, she looked at me. 
I didn't want to kill her, she said. Her wolf wanted to die. It seemed like Naomi was hellbent on taking you as her mate and killing me. Whatever promise she made with Alpha Trevor, she wasn't going to keep it. A low growl erupted from my chest at the mere mention of his name, but a squeeze of my hand from Lena made me feel better. Her hand stayed in mine. It calmed me, knowing that she was close by. It's sad to hear that a wolf wanted to die, said Alpha Dean. I never heard of such a thing. That's why it was so hard to kill her, Lena blurted. I kept thinking about her wolf in all this. I sighed. Tim walked back in, looking slightly flustered. I forgot how much paperwork there was, he said. I smirked. Lena cleared her throat, which made us all look back at her. I know I am leaving here today, she said, but her eyes scanned over to Tim and Logan. Lena looked at them for a few moments but looked at me. Eli, she said. Could you give me some time with my family for a moment? I need to talk to them about something. I stared at her, thinking she was joking, but her face turned serious. I want to stay with you when I get out, she exclaims. My eyes rounded, but she carried on. I need to talk to my family about some things, she said. You can get yourself ready and shower. Once I'm ready, I will let you know when to come and get me. I smiled. I felt relieved that she wanted to stay with me, but something was clearly up with her, I didn't know what. I will see you later, I said. I leaned down and placed a kiss on her head. I wanted to kiss her, but I thought it might make it awkward with everyone being around. I pulled back and smiled. Lena smiled. I will see you in a while, she whispered. I nodded, letting go of her hand. As soon as my hand left hers, I felt lost. My father, Alpha Dean, and I went out the door, leaving Lena with the men of her family. She is staying with you, said Alpha Dean, pulling me from my thoughts as we walked through the hospital. We were walking out of the hospital and heading toward the pack house. Yeah. I said, feeling slightly off. I thought I heard her wrong. You didn't, said my father as I looked at him. I knew she would come around. I wonder what she has to say to her family, said Alpha Dean. I shrugged. I looked toward the pack house entrance, which made me stop as I spotted Luna Stephanie waiting for Alpha Dean. I smiled as Alpha Dean took off running. I will be in the office, said my father, who stopped with me. I will get the funerals for the pack members who lost their lives in the attack. I sighed as remembering the attack brought everything back. How many did we lose? I asked. My father was quiet for a moment but turned to look at me. Not many, fifteen, he said. I closed the pack line down while waiting for news about Lena. All the pack members were there, trying to find out how she was. I didn't want to hear from them, but I wasn't being nasty, the emotions that come through such grief were the worst emotion to feel, especially when it's not your own. I cleared my throat. Organize all the funerals and do them for the next few days, I said. Let all pack members grieve, and training is off for a few weeks. My father looked at me with a smile. Yes, Alpha, he said, which made me frown. My father laughed. You are taking on the role I have been trying to get you to do for the last few years, he said. I didn't push you, especially since most of it was due to Lino leaving. But I like this new you, she brings the best out of you. I smiled. She does, doesn't she? I said. My father nodded. He looked toward the pack house and sighed. You better get ready for Lena, he said. She won't be long till she comes here to be with you. My heart was going like a train, 
running fast on high alert. Lena was coming to the pack house to stay with me. I was excited, but nerves were kicking in. Blaze came forward, which made me look back at him. You better shower, he said, wagging his tail. You smell bad. I grunted. Thanks, I muttered under my breath. I looked back, and my father was staring at me. What's wrong, he asked. Blaze told me I smell, I muttered, which made my father laugh out loud. I have to admit, Eli, he said. You do. You need to be all clean for Lena's return. I stared at him, but a smirk was trying not to itch the corners of my mouth. Come on, he said as he started to walk toward the pack house. I watched as he walked away. I was happy but also afraid of what would happen when Lena showed up. A lot has happened, and she was injured. But more questions were running around my head, but I shook them away. I couldn't think about them now, I had to clear my head before she came. I started to walk toward the pack house with one thing on my mind, Lena. Chapter 70 Lena Eli leaves the room with Alpha Dean and Alpha Frank following him. I was left looking back at all the men in my family. Bex and I were trying to figure out what we saw in our dream. It was a dream, she muttered. It had to be. I stared at her. I guess, I said. But it felt so real. Bex nodded. Someone cleared their throat which brought me back to the room. Uncle Keith and my dad were smiling back, but Logan looked like he wanted to be elsewhere. He kept looking at the ground. I looked around and realized that Sophia wasn't there. Where is Sophia? I asked. Logan shook his head and looked at me, giving me a small smile. She is helping around the pack, he said but something about his body language made me think something was wrong. I gave a small smile, even though I didn't believe him. Well, shall we get you ready to go home, said my dad. I nodded. I plan to go to the house for a few hours to collect my things. I wasn't going to stay, I needed to be with Eli. I knew I had to talk to them about things but how could you explain what I saw without freaking anyone out? The way the tingles were with us, I knew the mate bond would never give up on the fact that I needed to be with him, and in all honesty, I wanted to be with him. I was going to make him work for it more, but I don't know if I can. My body can portray me. I have seen it before, and it is only a matter of time before it will again. I wanted to go back so I could talk to each of them. The dream affected me. Mama Wolf looked like she was happy, whispered Bex through my head, which made my heart ache slightly. The mere mention of her had my mind racing about whether I should tell them the truth, knowing my luck, I would end up being the laughingstock of the family. I got up and moved to the edge of the bed, placing my legs over the side. My hip was throbbing. The doctor told me that the wound would be gone soon, but it would take a while as it was from an alpha. That part was not good, and the fact he told me that it could leave a stain would be a permanent reminder of what happened, but I'm not going to let that prick get to me. Uncle Keith went around the side and handed me some clothes. I smiled. All the men left, and I quickly got changed, even though the wound was painful, I managed. Once I was ready, my uncle and father walked back in. Logan will meet us at the house, said my father, as I took his arm. There was definitely something going on with my brother, but I didn't know what. We walked out of the room and headed through the hospital. Pack members kept saying Luna, which was nerve-wracking, to say the least. I wasn't going to get used to this, not in a hurry. As we approached the doorway, a faint stench of death remained from the attack. How many of the pack members died? I asked when we were out of earshot. Fifteen, Keith murmured. 
I felt sadness wash over me. I felt for them and their families too. No one should ever lose their loved ones like this. I should know. We carried on walking till we reached the house. As we approached, I noticed Logan was already there. He looked like he would rather be anywhere else but at the house. We all walked in, but I looked at Logan as he shut the door. What's up with you? I asked. Logan looked at me but didn't say anything. I stared at him for a few moments. Well, I said. Are you going to talk to me? Logan lets a low growl escape. Lena, he snarls. I don't have to talk to you. You need to rest. I stared at him. You need to start opening up, I said. If you don't, it will all blow up in your face. Logan stared at me, and his face changed slightly. Anger was written on his face. You need to get out of my business, he yelled. He looked around and growled. I don't need to be here, I'm going. Logan turned around and opened the front door. He stormed out with the door slamming hard behind him. Lena, Uncle Keith said. You could have waited until we were inside the house and settled. I looked over at him. Seriously, I said. Uncle Keith stared at me, but a sigh escaped. He is going through something, he said. He will talk when he is ready. I could feel Bex move in my head, but she didn't say anything. I knew she was listening. He will never open up, I muttered, which made Uncle Keith frown. You don't know, he went to say, but I couldn't help the low growl that came from me. Uncle Keith's eyes widened. Logan will never open, I said as I walked over to the couch and sat down. My dad and Uncle Keith stared at me. Logan needed to open up, he used the girls to cope with everything. Mum's death took a toll on us. Let it go, Lena, said my dad. I stared at him. Why? I asked. I'm worried about him. My dad stared. Tell me, I said. My dad looked at me but turned to Uncle Keith, who nodded. My dad sighed. Logan and Sophia have a few issues, he said. I don't know much, but the tension between them has been off lately. I stared at him. The women, whispered Bex in my head. Some of them must have been talking about what they did with him. I couldn't help but growl. I looked at my dad. Logan needs to own up to everything he has done, I said. I know what it was like when all those women were here. I had to endure everything Naomi dished out to me and the others. I got up from the couch and stood, staring at them. Logan knew all the women here would have mates, I said. Some may have found them, but can you imagine what it is like to walk around a pack, no less one you don't know, and have everyone tell you what your mate is like in the sack? I don't know if that was happening. But knowing how she-wolves can act, I wouldn't put it past them. Both men stared at me, but the understanding was written on their faces. They knew what I said was right. I learned firsthand what rumors and what people are like in this pack. Things needed to change. The house was silent. My dad cleared his throat. Shouldn't you go and pack to stay with Eli, he asked. I stared at him, his eyes were on me. Something was there, but I couldn't work out what. I nodded. I looked toward the stairs, I might as well go up and pack. Talking to these two will be hard. I walked over to the stairs, but when Uncle Keith asked his question, I stopped in my tracks. Why are you staying with him? I sighed. I turned around and looked at him. Why shouldn't I? I asked. It was only a few days ago that you rejected him, he said. Bex was up in my head and moving closer. After everything I have been through over the last few days, I said. 
I learned there is more to life than holding on to the past. I moved closer to them. You taught me that, I said to him. Uncle Keith gave me a small smile, but I looked at him and then at my father, whose face was holding so much. I didn't know the extent of what was going on with Naomi, no one did. I stopped just in front of them and placed my hands in theirs. Dad, Keith, I accepted Eli as my mate because it's my fate, I said. I needed space and might need some more. But I am ready to be with him. My father squeezed my hand, which made me look at him. I moved to him and wrapped my arms around him, pulling him into a hug. I pulled back and did the same to Uncle Keith. I could feel dampness on my cheeks, tears were flowing. They weren't sad tears, they were happy ones. I need to move on from all this, I said. I am supposed to be by Eli's side. I stared at them both and smiled. You know, I said, trying to lighten the mood, but part of me wanted them to know that this was what my mother wanted. It's okay to move on, I said and looked at my dad. Mum wouldn't want you being stuck in the house and feeling sorry for yourself. My dad looked at me and gave me a small smile. I don't think I can do that, he said. I loved her so much. How could I move on? A lone tear leaves his eye as he looks at me. I move from Uncle Keith's hand and place my hand on my father's cheek, catching another tear that escapes. He leans into my hand as I leave it there. You don't have to forget her, I said. It is all right to smile, laugh and even have fun moments. She would probably want to hear about them when you meet her with the moon goddess. My father's tears were coming, but I kept moving them away. How did you get to be so grown up? asked Uncle Keith. I looked over at him as he wiped his tears with the back of his hand. I gave them a small smile. I had two amazing teachers, I said, looking between them. I couldn't help but hug them both again. I pulled back after a few moments and looked at them. I let my arms drop to my sides and look at them. I had best go and pack, I said. We will help, said my dad. I smiled. I'm only going to take a few items with me for the time being, I said. I don't want to move all my stuff in just yet. You are going to make him work for it a bit more, said my dad with an amused look. I couldn't help but laugh. Too right. I said, which made them both laugh. Knowing him, he might say something to me that will get on my nerves. My father smiled. I turned around and walked toward the stairs with Uncle Keith and my father following me. As we got to my room, I quickly grabbed a small bag from the floor and started to put a few items in the bag. My father and Uncle Keith sat on the bed and talked. It was nice. Bex moved toward the front, which made me look back at her. You okay? I asked. Bex nodded, but there was a slight change in her mood. She seemed happy. I can't wait to see mate, she said. I laughed. I know, I said. Bex looked at me but moved her head to the side. You seem nervous, she said. Should I be worried? I stare at her. She was right, I was nervous. I was going to be staying with Eli, my mate. My insides were doing somersaults, and I felt sick. Lena, she called out, which made me look back at her. Mate won't hurt us, she said. He is sorry. I sigh. I know that, I said. I don't know. I guess I'm overthinking everything. Bex nodded. I got you, she said. You don't have to mate or mark mate yet. We will wait till you are ready. My eyes widened. Mate and mark. I muttered. That can wait for a little while. Bex nodded, but I could see the disappointment in her eyes. 
I guess she wanted to mate and mark with Eli so she could talk to Blaze. Bex, I whispered. I will, but I need some time. Bex nodded, but I knew she wanted me to say more. I will, I said. I promise. Bex didn't say anything but moved back slightly. She laid down in my head, with her head resting on her front paws. I looked back at my father and Uncle Keith, who were staring at me. All okay, sweetheart, asked my father. I cleared my throat. Yeah, I said, looking around and realizing I got everything I needed. I glanced at my father and took his hand into mine. I will leave now, I said. Can we have food tomorrow? My father nodded. All three of us will, he said, looking over to Uncle Keith. I looked at them both. Well, I had best make a move, I said. I picked up my bag and placed it over my shoulder. All three of us move out of my room and head back downstairs. I hugged and kissed them both before I opened the front door and walked out. I knew they were watching me as I walked away. I was going to be staying with Eli. I was completely nervous, but I could feel the excitement too. I knew I needed to do this and be there with him, not just as his mate, but as his Luna. All pack members needed to see me and know that I accepted him. It might take a little time to get there but I know we will. Let's hope he doesn't open his mouth and drop himself into a hole. I could hear Bex chuckle. We know human mate will, she said, which made me smile as we walked closer to the pack house. Chapter 71 Eli time was getting away from me as I tried to control my excitement about Lena coming over. It was getting darker as I showered quickly as I had no clue when Lena would arrive. Blaze was happy, knowing that Lena was coming. Do you think we can mate with her, he blurts out, making me stop in my tracks. I wanted to mate her as much as he does, but something told me we had to take it slow with her. I don't know, I muttered. I think we'll see what happens when she gets here. Blaze was silent, which made me look back at him. His eyes bore into me. We need to mate with her, he said, which caused me to frown. I know, but I am not forcing her to do it. You will have to wait or be in the doghouse with me if we don't behave. Blaze grunts. I looked back to my room and took it in. I needed to clean up, I seemed to have thrown most of my clothes on the bed. I quickly placed all my clothes in the washing basket and tidied up as much as possible. The room was tidy as I could get it. I quickly changed into a pair of sweatpants, but a knock at the door came before I could place on the t-shirt. It sounded quiet, and I knew who it was as her scent wafted in. It made my insides ignite. Blaze stood up to attention in my head as I walked to the door and opened it. There she was. Lena. Her eyes bore into mine, but I watched as her eyes traveled down. She was checking me out. Lena bites her bottom lip as her eyes travel back up, and I try my hardest not to smirk. You done checking me out, I said as the smirk itched the corners of my mouth. Lena looked back at me as a flush of red spread across her face. Mate is embarrassed, whispered Blaze in an amused tone. Can I come in, she asked, trying to clear her throat. As I stepped aside, I didn't say anything, pulling the door wider. Lena stepped inside and walked a few steps but stopped. She took in my room, well ours now. Your room is massive, she blurts out. I smiled as I walked up behind her, threw my t-shirt on the ground, and stood as close as I could to her but I know I can't be an arse. Can I take your bag? I asked, which made her turn around and stare at me with wide eyes. Yeah, she starts to say but closes her eyes. There was a faint scent in the air, and I knew it was her arousal. FK. 
I can't do this, I thought. I took a step back. I needed to calm down. I licked my lips as they started to get dry all of a sudden. Lena stared at me with wide eyes but slowly removed her bag from her shoulder and handed it to me. I smiled. I walked backward and placed her bag in the closet while my eyes stayed on hers. Lena cleared her throat and turned around, she walked to the chair and sat down. I kept my eyes on her as her eyes met mine. This shouldn't feel so awkward between us, but why was it? I thought. You are probably wondering why I decided to stay with you, she said, pulling me from my thoughts. I could feel Blaze moving closer, but not close enough for her to see him. Lino looked at me and smiled. I thought I should, she said. I don't want pack members to second guess about me being your Luna. I nodded as I gave her a small smile. I take it she didn't do it for us then. Also, I wanted to, she whispered, which made me look at her with round eyes. Lena smiled. I wanted to be here, Eli, she said. The mate bond is working, and even if I didn't, Bex would have found a way to get to Blaze. I don't want to fight or argue, but I will state this, I will punch you if you get on my nerves. I stared at her with slight amusement itching the corners of my mouth. I know I don't think before I speak, I have to work on that, or I will look like I have been in one too many fights. You will look like a P.Y., Blaze said with a hint of amusement, causing me to frown. That doesn't mean you have to be an arse about it, I muttered. I looked at Lena, who was staring at me with a smirk. I guess Blaze said something you didn't like, she said. I had to change the topic, or I would be classed as an arse if I made a move on her. I cleared my throat. So, do you know what happened while you were away? I asked. Lena gave a slight laugh. Trying to change the subject, are we? She asked, leaning back into the chair. I smiled. Lena smiled but let out a low sigh. I want to know what happened she said. I moved around the bed until I got in front of her and sat down. I looked at her and told her everything that had happened. I mean, she was tortured for two days, and she had no clue what was going on, which I am guessing Naomi never told her what was happening within the pack. Well, it turns out that Alpha Trevor placed some of his mistresses in a few packs to find out information about us. I said as I came to the end of the conversation. Her eyes widened. Mistresses? Really? She asked. I nodded. Yeah, we found out Amber was one of them, and even the girl Anna from Alpha Gareth's pack, the girl that knew you, I said. Her eyes stayed on me, but her mouth went into a hard line. She didn't say anything but nodded for me to carry on. You know about the attack, but we figured that Alpha Trevor used mostly rogues, only a handful of his pack members were here. Lena nodded. I wonder if he made them suffer, she said as she looked at me. I mean, a pack follows its Alpha, but why wouldn't his? That's a good question, but then the memory of my father telling me all about his father. Maybe, he was following his father's footsteps. I said. I told her all about his father and what happened to him. Lino listened and sighed. So, this was all to do with an old man who wanted everything and his son trying to do what his father believed. I must admit, that's just low, even for an Alpha. I couldn't help but agree with her. Alpha Trevor told me he wanted you, and he wanted everything Alpha Dean and I had, I said which made her stare at me. I think Naomi and Alpha Trevor wanted what they both couldn't have, she said with a small smile. Lena kept her eyes on me and searched my face but sighed as she talked. So that makes you the Alpha of his pack now, she said. I nodded. It was far from my mind, being an Alpha to another pack. I guess, 
I said. We should go there, she blurts out. I mean, together, as Alpha and Luna. Alpha Dean has sent men there to check the pack out, I said. We will have confirmation tomorrow on what is happening there. But for us to go together to the pack, I must think about it. Lena stared at me, confused. Why? she asked. Alpha Trevor's wolf bit you, I said. The doctor told you, you needed to rest for a few days. Lena stares at me but moves closer, placing her hands on my face, which causes me to tense slightly but relax when she brushes her fingers on my cheeks. Blaze comes closer and stares at her, and lets out a purr. Big softy, I murmured to him, which he never did. She's our mate, he whispered. I am a big softy to her. I groaned inwardly. I looked at her, her eyes searched mine. Eli, she whispered. I'm coming with you, she said. We need to do this together like Alpha and Luna. I want to be there with you. Lena moves back and removes her hand from my face, which makes me feel lost without her touch. We don't know what Alpha Trevor did to them, she said. I won't fight. I want to see if I can help another way, I won't fight. I stared at her. I can manage that, her not fighting. Blaze grunts, but I ignore him. I needed her to rest, she needed to be a hundred percent before she did any fighting. Okay, I said. I can agree to that as long as you don't fight. You need to keep that wound to heal. Lena nodded with a smile. I stared at her as the room filled with silence. I wanted to talk more, but what could I bring up? There was so much I wanted to know about her and say, but starting a conversation with her was easy before, this is weird as she is my mate. So, said Lena. What is the plan for sleeping arrangements? I stared at her. I wanted her to sleep with me, but I needed her to make the first move. You will take the bed, I said. If you want. I could feel Blaze letting out a low growl escape. I want to sleep with mate, he murmurs. I ignored him. Lena cleared her throat. I'm going to use the bathroom, she said. I watched her as she moved out of the chair, walked over to her bag to get something out, and then went to the bathroom. She walked in and closed the door. I sigh. This was going to be a long night. I moved off the bed and walked to the closet to grab a pillow and blanket. I was going to sleep on the couch. I placed everything ready and sat on the couch as Lena walked out of the bathroom. I watched her move over to the bed. She had changed into a pair of tiny shorts and a tank top. I could feel me harden as I watched her climb in. Lena turned to look at me her eyes searching my face. I guess we should go to sleep, she said. I nodded without saying anything as she moved further down into my bed and settled to sleep. I got myself ready and settled down, resting my head on the pillow. Mate, whispered Blaze, which made me look back at him. He was clearly dreaming, as his eyes were shut. I sigh, but as I am praying for a good night's sleep. Lena sent wafts over to me, sending me into a stated state. Her scent wraps me like a blanket and makes my eyes start to get heavy, which sends me into a deep blissful sleep. I wasn't going to fight it. Chapter 72 Lena I stir and move. I have to admit Eli's bed was soft. I thought I couldn't sleep, but Eli's scent on the pillow helped. I was surprised when I asked about the sleeping arrangements that she should take the bed. I thought he would have at least fought me on it. Bex was on high alert but was stunned to see Eli trying to keep to his word of going slow with me, and so was I. I am happy he did, but I did feel a slight disappointment wash over me. That was the mate bond, murmured Bex in my head. I could feel her move around. 
I slowly moved and sat up in bed. I looked around till my eyes landed on the couch. My mouth became dry just by looking at him. Eli was still asleep on the couch, snoring. I stared at him, tracing his muscular form with my eyes. His sweatpants were hanging low. I could feel my core tighten at the sight. Yum, said Bex, which made me look back at her. Mate looks hot. I stared at her as a smirk itched the corner of her mouth. You know he does, she said. You want to ride him as much as I want to dry hump him. I felt a blush spread through my cheeks as someone cleared their throat. I looked back at Eli, staring at me with a smirk pulling the corner of his face. You okay over there, he asked as he moved and sat on the couch. I stared at him and nodded. That was all I could do, my mouth would have said something stupid. I could hear Bex laugh in my head as I watched Eli move from the couch. I watched as he stood up and walked over to me. I couldn't move. Eli steps closer to the side of the bed and leans, his face inches away from mine. Morning, he murmurs as he looks at my lips. I cleared my throat. Morning, I rasped. Eli looked at my lips and then at my eyes. I wanted him to kiss me. Eli moves closer but stops. I stare back at him as his face goes blank. Someone was mind-linking him. Bex looks through my head and pants slightly. Eli sent floods over us, calming us in an instant but also making everything as my insides tremble with desire for him. I stare at Eli as he shakes his head. He looks back at me and sighs. We have to get to the office, he said, pissed off. Alpha Dean has some news regarding Alpha Trevor's pack. Eli moves back and walks toward the bathroom. I felt cold and lost without him near me. I watched as he closed the door. I wanted so much to walk in there and kiss him. Do it, murmured Bex as I looked back at us. Mate wanted to kiss us. I guess, I said. But whatever was said in the mind link made him angry enough not to. Bex whined in my head. It's okay, I said. We're supposed to be taking it slow, remember. Bex stared at me and sighed. I guess, she said, and walked back into my head. I knew his action hurt her but part of me was still trying to figure it out with him. I wanted to kiss him, and I could give him one before we left for the office. I could feel movement in my head, but I decided to prepare for whatever was going to happen next. I moved out of bed and walked over to my bag. I picked up a t-shirt and yoga pants. I got dressed quickly, and as I placed my t-shirt down over my stomach, Eli opened the bathroom door and looked at me. He was wearing new sweatpants and a vest. His eyes met mine as I looked over at him. I couldn't help but smile. You okay? I asked. Eli looked at me and smiled. Never better, he said, stepping out of the bathroom doorway. I walked over to him, which made him stop in his tracks. His eyes roamed over me. I stopped before him, only leaving an inch between us, and looked at him. His eyes were searching my face. He was trying to figure out what I was doing. I moved closer, closing the gap between us. I placed my hand on his chest and went on my tippy toes, I leaned into his cheek and kissed him. I moved back and looked back at him, his eyes widened. What was that for? he asked. I cleared my throat. I wanted to give you a morning kiss, I said. I smiled and went to walk away, but Eli grabbed hold of my arm and turned me back toward him, making me fall into his hard chest. His hand went to the nape of my neck and moved my head toward his. His mouth went straight to mine, and he kissed me. I felt tingles ripple through me which caused a surge of electricity to run through every fiber of my body. Eli licked my bottom lip to gain access, 
which I gave him, and his tongue slid in. His tongue glides over mine as he deepens the kiss. I pull back slightly, panting for breath. I knew if I carried on, we both would be in that bed. Bex was panting in my head. That was hot, she murmured. I had to ignore her. I licked my lips, savoring every taste of his mouth. Eli stared at me with a grin appearing on his face. That kiss was a good morning kiss, he said, kissing the top of my head. I smiled. Eli placed his hand in mine and looked at me. I know you want to go slow, he said. I will try as much as possible, but I am having difficulty controlling Blaze when you are around. I will be honest, he wants to mark and mate with you. I could feel heat brush through my cheeks as he carried on talking. I can keep him at bay for now, he said. But please, try to calm down too. Your arousal affects me more than anything. OFK. I will try, I whispered. Eli smiled. Come on, he said. Let's go to the office. I nodded. Eli and I walked out of his room hand in hand, to the office. A few pack members saw us and bowed to us, saying Alpha and Luna, but I did notice a few unmated she-wolves glaring at me. I knew this would still happen, but I had to ensure I didn't show it bothered me. Eli was trying to prove that he was willing to do anything to make it up to me, I had to prove to myself when it came to she-wolves. They were jealous, and that's all I had to remember. They won't go for him, I will kill them if they try anything. Bex growled. Mate won't do anything, she said. Besides, we will kick his ass. I nodded. As we approached the office, I could smell the food as soon as Eli opened the door. There on the table were two plates of food and some coffee. I looked around and saw Alpha Dean and Alpha Frank standing by the window. There you both are, said Alpha Frank as he looked over to us as we walked in. I asked an Omega to bring you some food, you can eat while we tell you both what is going on. I nodded and walked over to the couch. Eli moved with me, and we both sat next to one another. I let go of his hand as I picked up my knife and fork. I could feel eyes on me, but I didn't care. I was starving. So what is so important, asked Eli as he took a huge mouthful of food. I ate quietly and listened in on what was being said. Well, I sent two men into Alpha Trevor's pack, said Alpha Dean. I looked up and noticed Alpha Dean looking at Alpha Frank, who nodded. Alpha Dean looked back at Eli and me. I received news early in the morning from my beta that they hadn't returned to the pack with any news. My beta went to the pack to find out, only to find the men's dead bodies. You mean they were killed, said Eli. Alpha Dean nodded. Yeah, they were, he said. I don't know what to make of all of it. I looked at him. Do you know who did such a thing? I mean, did rogues do it? I asked. Everyone looked at me, confused. I cleared my throat. I mean, Alpha Trevor used rogues for the attack, he could still have kept some in his pack, keeping an eye on the pack members. All three men looked at me, but Eli smiled. I think we need to go and check it out today, he said. I will have some of my men meet us there, said Alpha Dean. Your pack needs to rest after that attack. Eli nodded. I'm coming too, I said as I sipped my coffee. Somehow, food has been long gone from my mind. I wanted to know what was happening in that pack. Remembering what Eli said, only a handful of Alpha Trevor pack was there during the attack, which makes me wonder where the others were. I looked around, and my eyes landed on Alpha Frank, who was shaking his head. No, Lena, he said. I can't let you go, you must stay here and look after the pack. 
I frowned. I'm going, I said. You can look after the pack, and I will go with Alpha Dean and Eli to the pack. All three men were staring at me, but I noticed Eli smile. I sighed. Alpha Frank, I said as I leaned forward for him to see me. Bex was close by, she knew why I wanted to do this. We were going, we wanted to see if our dream with Mum and the Moon Goddess was right. I think both of us should go. I mean, show what we are like as Alpha and Luna, I said. We don't know what we are walking into, and we don't know what Alpha Trevor was like with his pack. I mean, why use rogues if he had a pack in the first place? I looked at him, and I could tell he was pondering over what I had said. Alpha Frank sighed and nodded. Fine, he said. I would mind link some of our men to go with you too. You don't know what you are walking into. I nodded but didn't say anything. Eat, said Alpha Dean. Little Luna needs to eat and get her strength back if you want to come with us. I looked at the food and began to eat. After a few minutes, my food and coffee were gone. I leaned back in the chair but felt a hand on my shoulder. I looked over to see Eli smiling back. SUVs are going to be outside, said Alpha Frank, with a smile plastered on his face staring at us. Keith and eight of our men are going with you, he said. Your dad is going to help me with the pack. He looked at me. I'm going to keep him busy, as I haven't mentioned you are going to be going with them, he said, looking directly at me. He wouldn't be too happy when he finds out. I was thankful to Alpha Frank. Alpha Frank looks at me and move his head to the side. How's your hip? he asked. I must admit that every time Eli is near, I don't feel the pain. It's when his touch goes, it throbs. It's okay, I said, slightly lying. I could feel Eli tense slightly, which made me look at him. He stared at me, but nothing was said. We will need to leave, said Alpha Dean, who had been on his phone for a while. I looked at him and nodded. He smiled. We all got up and left the office, heading toward the front door. Alpha Dean walks out, and we follow him. I could feel Eli's hand on the lower part of my back, guiding me. Bex was up on all paws in my head, which made me look back at her. Maid knows you lied about the injury, she muttered. I sigh. I guess he did, I said. I know we need to rest, but something deep inside me is telling me to go to the pack. We need to know what happened to his pack. Bex nodded. I'm on your side, she said. I hope Maid doesn't sideline us and tell us to stay. He better not or he will be getting a pissed off Lena on his case, I thought. We walked outside and headed to where eight SUVs were waiting for us. Eli and I climbed into one while Alpha Dean took another. The SUV started and drove away. I stared out of the window. I could feel Eli move and place his hand into mine. You okay? he asked. I looked at him and nodded. I'm fine, I said. I wonder what we will find when we get there. Eli looks at me and stays quiet for a few moments before he talks. I wonder, too, he said. I have a bad feeling about it, though. I stared at him, but he didn't say anything else. Well, that's not making this any easier for my nerves, I thought. Chapter 73 Eli the drive to Alpha Trevor's pack was short and on the other side of the territory. I couldn't help but turn to look at Lena, who had been quiet since we got in the car. I could feel Blaze stir in my head and come closer to see her. Mate, thinking, he whispered. I have to admit, we were all doing it. Thinking about what we were walking into when we got to Alpha Trevor's pack. My thoughts were questions about what could be happening, such as what did Alpha Trevor do to his pack? 
why use rogues and not his pack members? Maybe pack members won't follow the crazy alpha, mutters Blaze. I looked back at him, he had a point. Unquestionably, Alpha Trevor's pack didn't believe in what he and his father believed in, something didn't sit right with me. How can anyone believe that trying to steal or even take what other people have is a good thing? If someone had a problem, surely they would challenge the Alpha's authority. I heard Blaze huff out as I looked back at him. Blaze sits on his hind legs and stares at me. That Alpha had a feral wolf, he murmured. If anyone went against or even challenged him, they probably were tortured to death or killed. He nearly tore Mate apart. I sigh, remembering how tough he was. We only managed to kill him as he had his back on us, stoking our mate. We used it to our advantage. Blaze nodded. I felt something stirring beside me, which brought me back to the car, and I looked toward Lena. Her eyes were on me, and she gave me a small smile as she noticed I was looking at her. My heart fluttered at the sight of her, but my thoughts returned to the kiss we shared this morning. I couldn't help but kiss her, I wanted to do more. I could feel Blaze move closer to look at Lena. You okay? she asked. I smiled and nodded. I'm fine, I said and moved my hand to hers taking it into mine. She squeezed my hand slightly, making me look at her. Lena smiled, but she looked over the seat to the front. Stop, she said. I looked in front and noticed a few cars parked to the side. The driver pulled over and stopped. I let go of Lena's hand and climbed out of the car, noticing Alpha Dean walking over to the men. I walked over to them. Alpha Eli, said Alpha Dean. These are my men, and this is my Beta, Beta Kai. I nodded. Alphas, said Beta Kai, looking between us. We can't get in through the gate. They haven't answered the woman we sent to see if they would allow her to go in. She pretended to have a flat tire, but no one came. She's human and a mate to one of the men. What happened after she left, asked Lena, who made me look over at her. She was looking at the Beta. Beta Kai looked at her but didn't say anything. Are you going to answer me, she asked, slightly pissed off. I could feel Blaze smirk as he came closer. This is my mate, I said. Luna Lena. Beta Kai looked at me and smiled. Oh, I didn't know he said. It's nice to meet you, Luna. As for your question, we sent two men around an entrance that we located, but they haven't returned. We did walk in, but as we got slightly closer, the stench of rogues started to fill the air. We had to turn back, and I notified our Alpha. Lena nodded. Beta Kai looked at us. What do we do now? he asked. I looked over to Alpha Dean, who nodded to me. Well, since I am to be their Alpha, I said. We must get in there and figure out what is going on. Beta Kai nodded as I carried on. I think we should all go in and head in three directions, in three groups. We should go from all sides and head toward the pack house. Alpha Dean, Beta Kai and I will take the men with us and head inside. All members of Alpha Dean's pack nodded. What about me? asked Lena. I looked over at her and sighed. You are staying here with the cars, I said. Lena frowned. Eli, she said with a warning, but I wasn't going to risk it. She was injured badly during the attack, and she needed to rest. No, Lena, I said, stepping closer to her. You were injured in the attack, you need to stay. I don't want anything to happen to you. Nothing will, she said. I can look after myself. I frowned. I know you can, I said, keeping my eyes focused on her. But that wound you have on your side, 
I started to say, but she cut me off before I finished the sentence. It has healed. Bex has been healing me. I need to be in there with you. I could feel anger fill me slightly. Why can't she do as she is told? I thought. Mate wants to help, said Blaze in my head. No, I yelled. You are staying here, and that is that. Lino looked at me, her eyes rounded. Elias, she grits out. I am your mate, I will come with you as they are to be my members too. I walked up to her, closing the gap between us. I stared down at her. No, I said. I will kick your ass, Elias, she said. Let me go with you. I hate her using my full name, but clearly, I pissed her off. I looked over to the driver. You, I shouted to him. You will stay with the Luna, if she comes inside the pack, I will throw you in the cells. You are to protect her with your life. The driver looked at me with white eyes but nodded. I looked down at her, but I was met by a pissed mate. Mate wants your nuts, said Blaze with an amused tone. And not in a good way. I don't care what she wants to do all I want is for my mate to be safe. I will see you in a bit, I said, I leaned down, but Lena moved her head away. I looked at her and sighed. I turned around and saw Alpha Dean and his pack members staring at us. Alpha Dean looked amused. I frowned and ignored him. Alpha Dean turned his attention to his pack members. I'll get into the groups I told you, he yelled and looked at me. I'm taking the west, and Beta Chi will take the east. You will go right through the middle. I nodded. All the men dispersed and I followed but couldn't help but look over to Lena, who was glaring at me while leaning on one of the cars. I knew she would be pissed. I was doing this for her safety, I needed her to be safe. Mate will be fine, said Blaze. Let's find out what is happening to the pack. I didn't say anything but turned around and headed further into the forest. Chapter 74 Eli I follow all of Alpha Dean's men into the forest to find the entrance that Beta Chi was on about earlier. Everyone dispersed in the direction that Alpha Dean suggested. I was left with six men. We walked through the middle, but we moved further as the stench of rogues started to come forward. As we approached closer, it got worse. It smelled like there were over a hundred, but the smell was hard to make a reasonable assumption. We scanned around the forest, but there was no one in sight. We came upon a house. It looked run down and even boarded up. It looked old. I looked over to one of the men. Go inside and see, I whispered. He nodded. The rest of the men and I stayed close as he walked inside. There was no one in there, but I needed to know if there was a family or someone who had lived there before something to indicate what happened here. After a few moments, the man came out and held something in his hand. He approached me and handed me what was in his hand. I looked down, and there was a family photograph in my hand. The frame and glass had blood all over it, all dried blood. I looked at the man. There's no one in there, he whispered. Not for a long time. There is a stench of rogues and loads of blood splattered all over the house. Whoever lived there, I wouldn't be surprised if they never made it. I could feel my anger build up. What happened here? We need to keep moving, I said, looking at all the men. I placed the photo on the ground and walked further into the forest. The middle of the forest was quiet, but we passed a few houses that looked like the first. Each one was the same, blood smeared all over the walls, but the last one had a dead body of an older man. No one buried him. The stench of his decaying body was hard for the men to handle, and one even threw up. My stomach was twisting, and my anger was getting harder to control. 
Blaze wanted out and to get to the pack house to kill everyone who was involved in this whole mess. As we moved further, we could hear something ahead. I looked at the men and placed my finger over my lips to tell them to be quiet. They nodded. We sneaked closer, hiding behind some trees, and looked around them, but my eyes widened. Rogues were all around the pack grounds, close to the pack house. Bonfires were built in places where some were drinking or even sleeping. A scream erupts throughout the grounds, making me look toward the pack house. A man stood with a woman, he had his hand in her hair and dragged her into the pack house. The woman struggled against his strength. I listened in, but I couldn't hear anything. The noise around the pack house was too loud to hear anything. We looked around and noticed we could move closer. A few bushes would be perfect for sneaking up on them. I looked at the men and pointed to the bushes. They looked at where I was pointing and nodded. Blaze was up and close to the surface, but he knew he couldn't show himself. It would give away who we were and what happened to their alpha. As we got to the bushes, I pointed to my ears for the men to listen in to what was happening. I listened in, but I wished I hadn't. The noises coming from the pack house were of women screaming, and some were being hit, moaning from men, grunting. I could feel my rage build up inside me. They were torturing the women, and it sounded like they were our asterisk ping them. We need to go in, growled Blaze. I couldn't agree more but someone stepped out through the pack house door and looked around. The person got my attention. I knew who it was. It was Alpha Trevor's Gamma, but I couldn't remember his name. The Gamma looked around and smiled. He looked over his shoulder as the door to the pack house opened, and another man walked out, holding onto a young girl who looked no more than sixteen. Her face was bruised but fear was written all over her face. The Gamma was about to speak when he looked around. The men and I ducked further down into the bushes, but something was wrong. Quiet, shouted the Gamma suddenly. All the wolves around quieted down, and there was silence. I know you are out there, he yelled. Show yourself. I looked over to the men, who shook their heads. I was about to look back when a branch behind us snapped. I looked over and noticed nine men staring back, growling. Well, there goes any ambush, I thought. Let me out, snarled Blaze in my head. No, I hissed back as I stood up. We need to see where this goes. But I will let you take over as soon as we know. Blaze growled. The men and I moved walking toward the pack grounds. All eyes were on us as we walked out. Growls erupted around us as we walked along. I looked at the Gamma, who was stunned to see me. Alpha Eli, he said. You should be dead at the hands of our Alpha. I growled. Funny that, I yelled. I killed him. The Gamma's eyes widened. You lie, he said. Bring him to us. What? Surely, he didn't believe I would have kept his Alpha alive after everything he had done. I killed him, I said, looking around. I made sure I said it loud enough for everyone to hear. Blaze was close by, staring. He took in everything and growled when he spotted a big building by the side. It looked like a barn of some kind. I sniffed the air. I could smell pack members, and they were close. They have to be in there, Blaze whispered as a low growl escaped his lips. He wanted every single man here, the Gamma and Rogues. We heard enough. I looked at the Gamma, who moved his head to the side, staring at me. A slow grin itched his mouth as he opened his mouth. I won't follow you, he yelled. I'm in charge now and will follow on after our Alpha's death. I'm the new Alpha. I growled. I don't think so, I yelled. I killed your Alpha, 
I'm in charge now. I looked around, rogues were snarling at us. I noticed movement coming from each side, and out came Alpha Dean with his group of men, and the other side Beta Kai with his, but as I thought we could take them, I noticed the rogues were behind them. We were all caught, and there weren't many of us. I believe Alpha, called out the Gamma. You are surrounded, and everyone here hates you, Alpha Dean, too much to let me not lead. The Gamma moved toward the entrance of the steps of the pack house, but before he could carry on, there was a commotion behind him. The young girl kicked the guy holding her in the nuts and ran toward the railing. She climbed over it and ran toward the forest entrance. I watched her, but the Gamma yelled. You three, he shouted, pointing to the three men closer to where she ran off. Go and kill her now. I watched as the three rogues shifted into their wolf forms and ran toward the girl. I looked back at the Gamma, who smiled. She is good as dead, he said. Alphas, you are both outnumbered, so how about you surrender to me, and I will make sure Alpha Trevor didn't die in vain. I growled. Don't think so, I snarled. The Gamma's smile widened. Alpha Eli, he said. I don't think there is enough of you to take on all hundred rogues, that is not including the ones that are on their way back from the attack that happened to you. I stared at him. He thinks the rogues will come back here, I don't think so. Many were killed during the attack, but most ran away. Surely, they won't be dumb enough to come back here. I didn't find out what happened to most of them, I was too busy concentrating on Lena. The thought of Lena made me want to run to her, but I needed to ensure we sorted out what was in front of us. I just hoped she had listened to me and was staying near the cars. Blaze growled. I looked back and stared at the Gamma, but before I could speak. Rogues, he shouted. Kill them. I looked around. Rogues were moving toward us, men and women circling us. We were separated, but they moved us to the center of the pack ground. I growled. I looked up at the Gamma, who was smirking. Let me out, roared Blaze as he came closer to the surface. I could feel him push me back slightly but join me up front. We had to fight. Again, but this time Lena was safe. Blaze lets out a roar, and we charged at the rogues taking out whoever was ready to get killed. Chapter 75 Lena what a jackass! Bex growled in my head in agreement. I was pissed at Elias. I can't believe that he made me stay behind. I was fit enough to fight. I wanted to be there for the pack members. Are you okay, Luna? called the driver. I glanced over at him, and his eyes were on me. I sighed. Fine, I murmured. I skim the stones with my foot as I look down at the ground. Mate wanted to make sure we were rested, said Bex, which made me look back at her. You can't be serious, I said. You agree with what he did? I mean, we both feel better. We are supposed to be Alpha and Luna, we should be there together. Bex moved her head to the side but let out a low whine. I do think it was a good move, she muttered. But he didn't have to be a jackass about it. I frowned. I leaned back on the car as I looked toward the forest, where everyone had left. Something was off, and I wanted to go in there. Luna, called the driver. Why don't you sit in the car? I growled but didn't look at him. I wasn't going to sit in the car like a princess. I ignore him. I stared toward the forest while scheming my foot over the gravel underneath my feet. I moved off the car that I was leaning on and walked slightly. Luna, called the driver, but I stopped at the end of the forest. Please, Luna, called the driver. I could hear his footsteps walking toward me. Please, 
I don't want the Alpha to kill me. I looked over my shoulder and stared at him. He won't kill you, I muttered. I was about to carry on when a loud, piercing scream echoed through the forest. I could feel the hair on the back of my neck sticking up on the end. Bex was up on her hind legs, growling. What was that? She sneered. It sounded like someone was in trouble. My instincts kicked in, and I knew I needed to save them. Without a glance at the driver, I ran into the forest. Luna, screamed the driver. I knew he was following me as I could hear his footsteps behind me, but I didn't care. I ran further into the forest. The stench of rogues fills my nose, and Bex growls loudly, pushing forward to come up front with me. Rogues, she whispered. I didn't say anything but looked around. There must have been hundreds of them around the pack, as the smell was terrible. I slowed my pace and walked toward what looked like a house. The stench of blood filled the air, death was here, and it was rotten to the scent. A branch snapped behind me, which made me look behind to see the driver staring at me. Luna, he whispered, walking toward me. We need to get back, we need. He was cut off by the piercing scream which seemed to be coming closer to us. Hide, I murmured, grabbing his arm and pulling him to the side of the house. The man leaned against the wall with me next to him, a young girl, not at least sixteen, came into view as three rogues came out behind her. Please, she pleaded. Let me go. The three men growled. Not a chance, sweetheart. One said. We will have our way with you first, and then we will kill you. I felt sick. What man would do such a thing to a child? I was about to step out when the driver's hand gripped my arm, which made me look at him. His eyes were pleading. Don't, he mouthed. I was about to say something when one of the rogues spoke. Come on, he said. Let's kill her. I want to go back and kill that Alpha Eli. I felt my stomach drop. They have Eli. Like hell am I standing behind while these rogues kill my mate? Bex was up front and pushed forward. We can take them, she whispered. I glanced at the driver, who was now staring at me with wide eyes. I knew he could see Bex, and she ensured everyone knew she was there. She was pissed and she wanted to kill. I turned around and stepped out. I don't think you will get to witness that, we growled. Three men looked up at me as the girl looked over her shoulder with round eyes. How about you leave the child alone? I said. How about you pick on someone your own size? One rogue came hurtling toward me, but Bex changed one of my hands into her claw and gripped him by the throat. Her nails dug deep into his neck as she yanked his throat out. Blood sprayed over us as we dropped his corpse to the ground. The other two rogues looked at each other and started to charge. The driver came out from behind me and shifted into his wolf, who took one out while I started to use my fists and legs to take the last rogue down. Bex and I used our combined strength and killed him with fists and legs. Bex placed her hand on his chest and dug her nails deep as she gripped his heart and pulled it out. His lifeless body dropped as a loud whine came from the other rogue as the driver's wolf shredded him apart. Bex moved back inside my head but stayed close. I looked around at the dead bodies, but my eyes landed on the girl staring back at me. I walked over to her, but she stepped back. Don't kill me, she whispered. I looked at her, stunned. We won't hurt you, I said. We are here to claim the pack, as my mate killed Alpha Trevor in the attack on our pack. The girl's eyes widened. You lie, she screamed. I was about to say something, but the driver beat me. My Luna doesn't lie, said the driver. Alpha Eli killed Alpha Trevor yesterday, and all the rogues at the attack fled away. 
The girl looked at him and then at me. You are a Luna, she asked. I nodded. I am, I said. We only found each other a few days ago. I know I lied to her, but I didn't want to go into great details about Eli and me. It wasn't the time. We came here to see what happened to Alpha Trevor's pack, I said as I moved closer to her. I knelt and looked at her. I won't hurt you, I said. I promise. I held my hand to her, but she stared at me. I want to help your pack, and so does my mate, Alpha Eli, I said. We want to know what happened here. The girl looks at me, but after a short time, she lets out a low sigh. I guess I can tell you, she whispered. I smiled at her. The girl moved closer to me and placed her hand on mine. I moved up and pulled her with me. I glanced over to the driver, who nodded to me. I looked back at her. Can you tell us what happened? I asked. The girl stood but bowed her head. Alpha Mac was horrible, she said as she looked up at me. But his son, Alpha Trevor, was worse. It started with taking a few women at a time over the years. No pack member would go against him or his higher ranked members, we were all scared of them. The girl let go of my hand and dropped it at her side. Alpha Trevor started to get worse, and over the last few months, rogues started to infiltrate our pack and become a menace. Alpha Trevor didn't care, she said. He wanted what Alpha Eli and Alpha Dean had. Even you, Luna. I nodded. I heard all this before. What happened to the pack members? I asked. Did they want any part in what Alpha Trevor wanted? The girl shook her head. Only the higher ranked members, she said. Everyone else was too scared to do anything. Bex growled in my head. Dead men walking, she muttered. I had to ignore her as the girl carried on talking. Before the attack, Alpha Trevor announced that all pack members would be fighting alongside the rogues, she said. Many told him no, but when they did, they were taken away to the cells for disrespecting their Alpha. The Alpha told us all that when he returned from his war, they were all going to suffer dearly. How? asked the driver. I looked over at him but I didn't realize how close he was to us. The girl looked toward him and sighed. They took all the females and placed them in the pack house. Many were our asterisk ped and tortured by the rogues that had been left. While all the men are in the cells. Many can feel everything happening to their mates, that is the worst torture in itself, knowing they can't save their mates from all the hurt that the men are conflicting on them. I growled. I want their heads when I get there. Bex agreed but looked toward the girl who was staring at me. Luna, she said. How are you going to rescue my pack? I mean, they have your alpha and the other one surrounded before I left. I stared at her. Good question, but something came to me. Who was looking after the pack while Alpha Trevor went on his war? I looked at her. Who's in charge? I asked. The girl looked reluctant to say, but she whispered the next part, only loud enough for both the driver and me to hear. The Gamma is still here. The driver growled. I looked up at him. We need to save the others, I said. Would you mind link the others from the pack to send more men and tell them what is going on? The driver nodded, and his face went blank. I looked toward the girl. What's your name? I asked. The girl smiled. Lily, she said. I smiled. Beautiful name, I said. The girl smiled but stared. Luna, she asked. How did you learn to fight like that? I looked at her and wondered how I was going to answer that. I've been training for years, I said which was technically true, but she didn't need to know what for. 
The girl smiled. Could you teach me? I nodded. I looked over to the driver, who was now smiling at me. Luna, he said. Alpha Frank told me to tell you to stay put, your uncle and some other pack members are on their way. I growled, which made the driver look at me. He smirked. I know I can't tell you what to do, he said and glanced around, then back at me. What do you suggest we do? I looked around and stared at the house we were hiding against earlier. How did the houses get like that? I asked. Rogues were forcing themselves in, said Lily. They took whatever they wanted and did whatever they wanted. Alpha Trevor didn't care about any of us toward the end. I looked at Lily, who looked sad. I looked up at the driver, who was giving the same expression. We need to get to the pack house, murmured Bex. I know, I said. What will I do when we get there? I looked back at Bex, who was moving her head at me. I think we can take them, she said. All we need to do is take care of the Gamma, and then all the rogues won't follow, hopefully, they will run before the others come. I agree. If we take out the Gamma, we can give the others a fighting chance. We could use the pack members, I said as an idea started to form in my head. I went over the idea with Bex, who was nodding. It should work, she said. I looked back at Lily and the driver. I have a plan, I said. But I need both of you to help. The driver nodded, but Lily looked scared. I don't know if I can, she said. I can't fight like you. I looked at her but smiled. You won't be fighting, I said. All I want is for both of you to free all the male pack members from the cells. They can help fight. Lily and the driver's eyes widened, but I looked at Lily. Lily, I said, placing my hand into hers. I will need you to tell them what is going on, tell them that the Midnight Eclipse Pack defeated Alpha Trevor and are here to save them. I looked at the driver. You will go with her, I said. She will need proof that a Pack member is here. He nodded, but his eyebrows furrowed. What are you going to do, he asked. I'm going to rescue my mate and kill the Gamma, I said. The driver and Lily stared at me, but my eyes bore into hers. Lily, I said. Can you show us the way to the pack house? Lily bowed her head and stared at our joined hands. I squeezed her gently to let her know everything would be fine. Lily looked up at me and nodded. Her face held so much emotion, and I could tell she was trying not to cry. Brave pup, murmured Bex. I agree. After everything that Lily and these pack members went through, we need to save them. Lily pointed to where we had to go, and we all silently walked together. Bex was up close but not up front. She wanted to check out the whole situation before deciding whether we would be in her form or mine. Whatever happens, I need to rescue the people and my mate too. Chapter 76 Lino Lily guides us through the forest. I looked over to the driver. I have to ask, I said. His eyes met mine. What's your name? The man smiled at me. Huh, Luna, he said. I nodded. I'm Lena, I said. I looked over to Lily, who was in front of us. I would rather you call me Lena. I'm not used to the whole Luna thing. I can't do that, Luna, he said. I frowned. Why? I asked, looking back at him. Hu stared at me for a few moments and sighed. Alpha Eli won't like me to do that, he said. Besides, you are one true Luna. You are powerful and even one that everyone will follow. I stared at him, slightly stunned. Ha chuckled. You don't believe that, he said. I mean, 
I heard all the rumors like everyone else, and I have to admit, I didn't know what you were truly like as a person. But after witnessing what you did there, I am honored to call you my Luna. I smiled. I felt slightly overwhelmed. I looked ahead. I knew he was trying to make me feel better, but I wasn't used to someone telling me to my face. Something I had to get used to, I guess. We are here, whispered Bex, moving slightly closer to the surface. I looked up and noticed Lily stop and rushed to a nearby tree. Hut and I ran over to her and stood on either side of her. I glanced toward Lily. She placed her fingers in her ears. I looked around the tree and could feel tears prick the back of my eyes. Eli and Alpha Dean were with all the men that came with us. They were all in the center of a circle as the rogues surrounded them, growling. A few were taunting them, pushing some of the men, and I noticed Alpha Dean punch one man, but another stepped forward. I glanced at the ground and saw some dead bodies on the floor, lifeless. They had to be rogues, the men with us were all in the center. We need to save, mate, whined Bex. I agreed, but how would I get to them? They were going to kill them. I needed to do something fast. I looked back at Hu, and he had the same worry. I glanced at Lily, who was scared. I knelt before her. Lily, I murmured, pulling her fingers from her ears and placing my thumb and finger on her chin. Her eyes were full of tears. I gave her a small smile. I need your help, I whispered. I glanced at Hu, who nodded, placed a hand on Lily's shoulder, and gave her a gentle squeeze. We need your help, I said. I need you to take her to where all the men from the pack are being held. Can you do that for me? Lily Eunice heard tears came and flowed. I can't, she whispered. You can, I whispered. I won't let anything happen to you, same with her. I glanced at him, which made Lily pull back from my hand and look at him. He smiled. I won't, he said. Show me where they are, and I will protect you. Lily looked at me and gave me a slight nod, which made me feel proud. Thank you, I said. I moved and stood before them. Ho looked at me. What are you going to do, Luna, he asked. Well, I said. I think I had best introduce myself to the crowd. Ho's eyes widened, and he shook his head. Luna, you can't, he started to say, but I placed my hand on his arm. I have to, I said, searching his eyes. I know my uncle and some men are coming here, but we must give them time. I need you to free all the men from this pack and show them that there is help coming in here to rescue them. They need hope, and they need it as much as Lily does. Ho looked at me and looked around the tree. Alpha Eli needs help, he murmured and looked at me. I could feel my stomach drop. I needed to help them, and I needed to help my mate. I know, and I will, I said. I know how, but the pack needs people to fight for them, and that has to be us. Ho looked at me for a few moments and sighed. Okay, he said. If we get out of this alive. You had better tell Alpha Eli that I tried to stop you. I smiled at him. Oh, I will, I said. I will make something up to get you a new position within the pack. Hu stared at me but frowned. Not that I like being a driver, he said, but a slow grin itched the corner of his mouth. We will see what happens after this. I nodded. Hu looked at Lily who was now staring between us. Are you ready? he murmured. Lily looked at me and nodded. I watched as Lily stepped in front of Hut and looked around. Her eyes scanned the grounds, and she looked back toward us. We need to go around the back of the pack house, she murmured. We can get to the cells on the other side, 
but guards are always posted on the doors, Hu cut her off before she could finish her sentence. I can deal with them, he said. Lily's mouth stayed open, but she closed it and nodded. Lily and Hu crouched down and moved slowly through the bushes, leaving me alone. I looked around the tree and spotted Eli, his lip was busted open, and a rogue was trying to r asterisk p out his throat. We need to save, mate, growled Bex. I moved back and closed my eyes. Bex stared back at me and sighed. You got this, she said. You are the Luna of the pack, and we can fight them. I looked at her but didn't say anything. That wolf told us that uncle was coming, she said. We need to keep them busy till they get here. I sighed. I know. I said. I just need to compose myself. Bex grinned. I got you, she said. We are in this together, Lena. I have your back, and trust me, and we will save them all. I stared at her, and her eyes were holding the truth. Bex has always had my back, but now we need to be the Luna, and I need to fight for what is mine. The new pack members, but more importantly, my mate. I opened my eyes and sighed. Let's do this, I murmured as I stepped out from behind the tree and walked toward the pack. I stared ahead but noticed a man standing to the side as I moved closer to the pack house. His eyes met mine, and they widened. I glanced toward the rogues, who were still circling the men. My eyes met Eli, and he growled. No he shouted. I glanced at the man, who smirked. Well, 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 he shouted. What do we have here? All the rogues stopped and turned to face me. I kept my head up and stared at the man. I could tell he wasn't more than a gamma. He was weak, he stared back at me. Who are you, sweetheart, he shouted. A low growl escaped my lips. I'm not your sweetheart, I shouted. How about you let my mate and friends go? The Gamma looked at me and started to laugh. Mate, he shouted, and stepped down the steps toward me. I stood rooted to the spot. And who would that be, he called, slightly amused. Bex was close, but she never came to the surface. Wait. I murmured to her. Wait till I say. Bex knew what I was planning as I went over everything in my head with her. We knew we needed to give Hut and Lily a chance, even Uncle Keith. The Gamma walked down the steps and stood just a few steps before me. I could hear movement behind me and noticed a few rogues looking at me like I was their next meal. Tell me, he said. Why would you risk your life for a pathetic alpha? I stared at him, and I couldn't help the smirk that itched the corners of my mouth. And why not? I shouted. He's an alpha, not a gamma. The gamma's face hardened. B.H., he said, pissed. I would make you pay for that. He looked over to the rogues. Grab the alpha, he shouted. I looked over my shoulder and noticed eight men grabbing both Alpha Dean and Eli. Eli's eyes were on me. I could see his eyes flicker from his to blaze and back to his again. I knew this was a long shot, but I needed to give them more time. I looked back at the Gamma. How about we make this interesting? I shouted. The Gamma looked at me and moved his head to the side. What do you mean? he asked. How interesting. I stepped toward him, which earned a growl from Eli. I ignored him. I mean, every Gamma or Alpha likes to make a deal, I said. I looked at the building behind him and noticed movement. Pack members, murmured Bex. Thank goddess for that, I thought. I stared at the Gamma and carried on. How about if I win? All the rogues will leave this pack alone and never step foot near any of the packs again, I said. The Gamma looked at me and laughed. 
what if I win, he shouted. I stared at him, and I knew what every man wanted. Power. If you win, I said. You get this pack and the other two packs. The Gamma looked at me as his eyebrows shot up. I knew I piqued his interest. What about the Alphas, he said. They won't let me take their packs. I looked over to Alpha Dean and Eli, pleading with them to make this sound legit. They will bow to you, I said. They will become rogues. Praying my plan will work. I stared at Alpha Dean, who looked like he wanted to laugh, but I used my eyes to motion toward the building. I could feel eyes on us, not just from the building but behind me. I knew who was there. They never waste any time. I smiled. Uncle Keith is here, murmured Bex, wagging her tail. Now, can we stop playing games and kill him? I smirked. I looked at Eli, who was staring back at me. His eyes were on me, but I could tell they were somewhere else. He had a mind link, after a few seconds, he returned and stared at me, smirking. I looked back at the Gamma, who had no idea what would happen next. I think, I said as I stalked toward him. You should surrender now before I kill you. The Gamma laughed. I knew he couldn't sniff out anyone, the stench of the rogues was pungent, and even I wanted to throw up. The Gamma looked at me, but something caught his attention. Attack, he growled toward the rogues. I let Bex come up with me, and we charged right at him. Bex came up to the front with me, and we pounced onto the Gamma. My hand changed into her paw, and her nails came out as we swiped at him. The Gamma moved back, but we kept the attack going. The Gamma lunged at me as his wolf came close, but I clenched my other hand back and punched him in the face. The Gamma stumbles back but growls. Stupid, he shouted and lunged at me, but we ducked out of the way and used my legs to trip him up, turning him around to face me and pounce on him again, with our hands wrapped around his throat. I leaned closer to him and plunged my hand into his chest. His eyes rounded as he gasped. I placed my hand around his heart and moved closer to his ear, say hello to the devil, I murmured and pulled out his heart. I moved back as Bex came closer to the surface. We threw the heart on the ground and stared out. All I could see was fighting. I noticed my uncle fighting alongside Eli and Alpha Dean. Someone caught my eye, it was my father, he was here too. There needed to be no more fighting now, everyone who caused all this was dead. Bex stared out and let out a roar. People who were fighting were stopping and looking at us. I looked at everyone but shouted, enough. All the wolves and humans stopped, looking at me. Many wolves' eyes were wide. I glanced around and stared at everyone but I landed on Eli, who was smiling. I think any rogue that wants to live best will make a run for it now. I shouted. Or you will find that you will be like the Alpha and his followers, dead. Rogues didn't have to decide as they began to run away from the pack. I looked at my uncle and father, who were staring at me. Kill whoever gets caught, I shouted, and all the men that came to help us ran after all the rogues. I knew I had to thank them later, but I also knew they would probably have my A S like Eli would when he gets to me. I cleared my throat and stepped away from the Gamma's lifeless body. I looked up and noticed Eli running over to me. I smiled as he ran up and wrapped his arms around me. Lena, he murmured into my ear. I don't know whether I want to kiss you. I could feel my insides ignite and in a good way, but this wasn't the place to get frisky with my mate. I pulled back and stared at him. I'm, I said, but I looked to the side and noticed faces. Many faces stared back at us. Many were frightened, but some were confused, and others were angry. I looked at Eli, 
who was now looking over his shoulder as he stared back at his new pack members. We needed to help them. Join our Facebook and WhatsApp group for more updates, link is given in description, rest audiobook will be continued in next episode.